Hello guys, today we're going to do a video about uh, one of the most simple and uh, at the same time important technical tools you have at your disposal. This tool is uh, the price action uh, being uh, viewed through Japanese candlesticks. In this video we're going to show you uh, how exactly to look at a Japanese candlestick, what, is, what exactly does it mean uh, about the candlestick going up, uh, going down. I'm going to talk about basic candlestick formations and patterns and we're going to give you some principles to be using when trading through candlesticks. So let's go to CTrader. We have three types of candlesticks, like I said before. There are the candlesticks that are going up. These are uh, candlesticks that signify that the exchange rate is rising. They have a black fill in CTrader. Then are the, and then there are the candlesticks that are going down. They signify that the exchange rate is dropping. These are the candlesticks with a white fill. A candlestick is made out of two parts. The first part is called the body, which is the square that we're looking at now. And the second part is called the shadow or, or the wick, which is uh, uh, this line that uh, extends from the top and bottom of the body. Uh, in a positive candlestick, the one with a black fill, uh, the bottom of the body signifies the opening price. The, for this time, 20 time minute period, we're at the 20 minute chart, uh, it opened, the price opened here. The top of the body signifies the closing price. And the uh, two edges of the line signify the lowest and the highest price. So in this 20 minute period, for this candlestick, it opened here. Then it went either high or low at some point. Uh, let's say that it went high here then it went low here, and then it closed here. Um, this, the candlestick doesn't show you in which series uh, this, these events happened. We know that because it's a positive candlestick, the close was after the high, but we don't know when the close and the, the higher and the lower price happened. For the candlesticks that are going down with a white fill, uh, the top of the body is the opening price. Then we have the low and the highest price, same as before and the closing price is the bottom of the body. Then we have a third type of candlestick, the one that uh, opened and closed at the same price, and it looks like a cross. It's called a doji. It opened at this price, it also closed at this price, and it went high and low uh, here. Now I'm going to give you some uh, basic principles that you should be using when trading Japanese candlesticks. Uh, we're going to talk about the principles before we go into the actual setups. Uh, because I need you to keep in mind uh, this information. Uh, the first principle is that Japanese candlesticks are more reliable the higher the time frame that you're trading. Um, the reason for that is that the higher the time frame, the more uh, volume or in orders went into the market, the more money uh, changed hands. So, um, with an example, if we see like, a, like a, a dodgy candlestick and we want to get a conclusion out of that in a tick chart, a tick chart is a very, very, very small part of the, of the price movement and it's not really reliable. However, seeing a doji on the daily chart, it means that the whole day, it gives us what happened the whole day, so it's quite reliable to use it and draw our conclusions. The next uh, important principle is that you should uh, be trading Japanese candlesticks always in context. Um, that means that you cannot uh, just identify, try to identify various patterns uh, randomly in the chart and try to trade them. The whole point of candlesticks is that they're supposed to be used in combination with our other technical tools, usually to signify some kind of reversal. So you should be uh, viewing them. Uh, you should be viewing them in context with other tools. I'm going to show you what I mean uh, by that later. The next principle about Japanese candlesticks and the main reason why they're so famous is because they can give you the ability to put very very tight stop loss. Uh, they signify exactly the place that you will be wrong in your trading. We're going to show that also in a bit. The next principle about uh, Japanese candlesticks is that they are great entry signals. They signify reversals and uh, retracements in trend, but uh, they do not provide an exit for, uh, for exiting your specific trade. So you should be exiting with other rules, uh, other technical tools, uh, uh, not the Japanese candlesticks. Another important principle is usually you cannot be trading uh, isolated uh, Japanese candlesticks, even though I'm going to show you some isolated candlesticks and what they mean. You should be wait for another candlestick confirmation before you trade them. 
Uh, for example, if you see a hammer in the top and you want to see a reversal, you should be trading on the next candlestick which actually goes below the hammer. Lastly, like we said before, uh, Japanese candlesticks are w most widely used for scalping. Um, scalping means uh, getting the top of something, usually top of the head, and uh, that's what scalpers do, they get the top of the candlestick. And they uh, are also very useful to signify reversals, uh, either in ranges or in trends with retracements. And those are the most popular ways of trading candlesticks. The last principle about ca Japanese candlesticks is that uh, even though I'm going to show you specific patterns and specific uh, candlestick formations and individual candlesticks, you should remember that in the market nothing is perfect. There are no perfect patterns, no perfect formations. You should be uh, looking uh, candlesticks as total and understanding how the price is behaving. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you that in a bit and you're going to understand what I'm talking about. So now we're going to go to C-Trader where I'm going to show you the most popular uh, single candlesticks uh, formations. So uh, we see a, a here a chart that I have. I've uh, drawn a trend line. Uh, the reason why I drawn this trend line even though we're talking about candlesticks is because uh, like I said before, the whole point of candlesticks is that they should always be looked in context, in combinations with your other tools. Uh, you don't randomly find candlesticks and try to trade them. So let's assume that we are, we are here, uh, that uh, this is a time that we're trading and we only have this part of the chart. We don't know what's going to happen next. Um, we have drawn our, our trend line here which is uh, not confirmed yet. Trend line is usually confirmed in three uh, spots. And we continue uh, here. The first important candlestick that I want to talk about is uh, the hammer. Uh, the hammer is a candlestick. The reason why it's called the hammer is that because it looks like a hammer. It has a very small uh, body and a very long uh, shadow. Uh, what the hammer signifies is very simple to understand. It says that the market try to go uh, in some direction, but it completely failed because it, uh, it turned to the opposite direction with great speed. In this hammer, the market tried to go short, but it completely failed and it uh, immediately go went long again. And we see that the important thing is that this hammer is right on the trend line that I have drawn. So it might be the third point confirming my trend line. Uh, so that's the whole point of the context. That's what I mean uh, going in context. So we learned what a hammer is. So uh, you're not supposed to randomly trade all the hammers that you see in the chart. Uh, even though you can uh, see them uh, all together and signify something. I mean, if you see a lot of weeks, a lot of hammers here, like we see here, it, it is a kind of a signal that the price is going to usually go down because it, uh, the market is trying to go up, but it fails. Next to the hammer, we have a candlestick called the Merubozu in, in Japanese. Uh, well, the, the name is weird, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that it's a candlestick with a huge body compared to the other candlesticks, big body, no shadows at all. This, can, this candlestick also is quite simple to understand. It's a clear message that the market knows exactly the direction it's going to go because it opens at some price and then it closes on the highest point. So there was absolutely no returning. Everybody just went long and that's it. They went long and the price stopped. This candlestick is usually traded uh, by, uh, in, in breakouts and uh, you can expect trends after this kind of candlestick because the market is very sure about uh, where it's supposed to go. Uh, so in this case, by looking at these two candlesticks, we would, uh, uh, we would be entering long. Um, I talked about before uh, about stop loss, stop losses. So let's let's uh, make a, a limit order um, by limit to to show you what I meant. The, uh, like I said before, you don't trade the individual candlestick. You trade the confirmation after the candlestick. So the individual hammer candlestick on our trend line was uh, the the point of reference that we start uh, to to think that. Uh, we, uh, the trend might be continuing. This candlestick, the big one, is the one that it's a confirmation. So we trade this candlestick, so we will enter at the end of this candlestick. And the stop loss, the great thing about candlesticks is that you can just go below the candlestick 
and you can have a great stop loss because the whole point of the hammer is that if uh, the price goes below the hammer, there is no reversal, there is no continuation for the trend, we were wrong, so we know exactly where we are wrong. And we can put our take profit, uh, like we said, go with two to one ratios usually, so it's 20, 10 pips, you can put it at 20 pips. So that's a great trade which uh, would have succeeded. Um, here we see also that uh, other hammers are forming, so you see all these hammers in a row. It's again some kind of confirmation that there is a reversal happening again on the next candlestick here. It's our confirmation, we can trade here, we can go short, same thing again. When the hammer is, looks like a normal hammer, like this, uh, or like this, it's called a hammer, it signifies the end of a downtrend. When a hammer looks like this, it's called an inverted hammer. Uh, next, uh, we have a doji candlestick. Here, the doji candlestick, for example. Uh, usually, this candlestick is not the most reliable single formation. It's usually uh, traded in multiple candlestick formations, like a morning star that we're going to talk about next. Doji, however, usually uh, talks about indecision in the market. And so, you see here, in the market, has, the volatility has stopped, and the market has uh, going sideways, that you see a lot of, uh, you see three dodges in a row because the market is not uh, knowing where it's supposed to go, it's, uh, there is no decision going on. Now I'm going to show you some multiple candlestick formations. Uh, these formations require more than one candlestick to, to be confirmed and understood. Again, we're going to see these formations in context and I'm going to show you again how important context is in uh, candlesticks. I'm also going to show you how great risk to reward ratios you get with candlesticks again, so uh, these are very important. So let's go to CTrader. Uh, the, first, uh, the first formation that I want to um, talk about is called a morning star. The morning star is a formation of three candlesticks that signifies a reversal from a downswing or a downtrend. The, the reversal from the other side, from the top trend, is called a, a, an evening star. Uh, which is uh, on the top. What I've done here is we have, a, we have a ranging market and what I've did, I've drawn an oscillator. The whole point of all these uh, candlestick formations is that you don't randomly search anywhere to find the formations and trade them. This oscillator here is telling me where the market is overbought and oversold. So what I'm doing is I'm, when the market goes to oversold areas or overbought areas, which are my signals for entry, then I start looking for my formations. So for example, uh, let's take this signal here, which is uh, the, the morning star that I've talked about before. Uh, we see that the oscillator is an oversold uh, area, so I'm looking for a long uh, spot. I have intentionally found the morning star that is not perfect. And the, whole, uh, the reason why I did that is because uh, candlestick formations are very rare perfect. It's not the point of the candlestick being exactly perfect, it's uh, understanding how the price uh, moves. This morning star is uh, made of from the, a strong candlestick that is, uh, going, uh, uh, that is going with the direction of the trend, like this one. Then a candlestick of indecision, usually it's a hammer or an inverted hammer or a dodgy candlestick. And then we have another candlestick, which is a strong candlestick going on the other direction. Uh, this is a very possible reversal, and it's very clear why. The one candlestick signifies that the market sure is going down, then there is a, a candlestick showing that the market is not exactly sure what's supposed to go next, and then there is a strong upwards movement. So this, is, this happens on the already oversold uh, uh, area of the, uh, of the swing, so it's a very good way to enter long. So I can enter long here. Uh, on the on the confirmation on the top of the uh, of the confirmation candlestick, the confirmation for a, an evening star uh, or a morning star is that the uh, the candlestick that signifies the other direction should not be going lower than the previous candlestick. It should, it should start from the body of the previous candlestick, not even going lower than the open of the previous candlestick, and it should be going a lot higher than the than the previous candlestick. So if I enter a long here, again, I'm going to put my stop loss very conservative to the lowest uh, part of my, uh, my hammer candlestick. And I'm going to put my take profit twice as much as my stop loss, which is 
13 pips, 26 pips, this trade is going to go well. Um, the opposite with the evening star, we go to uh, this candlestick. Um, this actually is not an evening star because this candlestick, we, we have here strong upwards movement, we have a, a hammer, but the next candlestick, as you see, didn't went higher than the open of the, confi of the, of the hammer candlestick. So we don't have the confirmation that we want for, for an evening star. So we can continue go. We reach again a point where we are at the uh, oversold area. Again, we have nothing. We have here another one which is higher than the oversold area before. We can choose to enter here. We can ignore it. However, this is a, a, a normal uh, evening star. It's, um, we have a, actually it's not so perfect again. We have a small candlestick, so the market is not uh, going very hard up. So, uh, so I don't know if uh, I would have entered this one, to be honest. So the whole point of this formation is that you find uh, areas which are uh, important relative to the other technical analysis that you're doing. In this case, we have an oscillator. And you get very good risk to reward ratios because you're entering uh, in a setup that has high possibility or higher probability that the rest of the candlesticks you're putting a very conservative stop loss so you're not going to lose a lot and you could put in big take profit so you're winning a lot of money. The last pattern that we're going to talk about, uh, the, the last patterns with multiple candlesticks is the engulfing pattern. This pattern is uh, happening when the body of uh, a candlestick, we, ha we have a, a swing going into some direction like this one is going up and we have the body of a candlestick of the opposite direction, completely engulfing the body of uh, another candlestick, which is going in the strong direction. So here we see that the oscillator is at the over, uh, overbought level, and we have this hammer candlestick, which signifies a reversal, and we also have an engulfing pattern, meaning that this candlestick completely engulfs the body of that candlestick, and it goes in the opposite direction. So this is a pretty strong uh, reversal signal. Again, we're going to put our stop loss high. We're going to go to uh, two to one risk reward ratio or one to one risk reward ratio, at least one to one. And uh, we're going to get our trade. Maybe this trade is going to fail. Maybe it's going to succeed. But uh, what matters is all of our trades. So I have intentionally uh, not shown you all the pattern uh, candlestick formations that you're going to find on the internet. There are a lot of formations and this is, uh, I did it because, like I said before, technical analysis should be simple. Formations with uh, four or five candlesticks the, that have very low probability of happening because they're not, um, they're very hard to find the exact, uh, exact pattern are a lot less important than actually doing very simple formations, looking at single candlesticks, but doing what's important, which is looking the candlesticks in context, not out of context, finding them on the chart. Uh, I hope that this uh, video was uh, teach you something about candlesticks. Uh, the next video we're going to be about support and resistance tra line trading, which is a very um, typical way that professional traders trade. Um, if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also share it with your friends. So thanks for watching.